The opinions expressed in the Brothers on Law Show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal professional legal advice. Thanks for tuning in to Brothers on Law on Go Country 105. I'm Larry Mandel. And I'm Rob Mandel. And we've been trial attorneys here in Los Angeles for over 40 years. On our show, we will discuss current events, talk about legal issues, and have some very entertaining guests stop by. So stay tuned every week for Brothers on Law right here on Go Country 105. All right, here we are, the Brothers on Law. I'm Rob Mandel. I'm Larry Mandel. And we're very happy to be here on a Saturday morning with all of you out there in Go Country land. And thank you to Debbie, the mortgage mom. She's so much fun, and we love following her. Yeah. And hey, so Larry... So true. It, yeah, yeah, very true. Um, you know, uh, there's been a lot of stuff in the news uh, about... Um, you know, I, I, I guess I could categorize it as uh, violence against women. Yeah, you know, sexual exp- abuse. Yeah, sexual abuse. You know, this guy, Jeffrey Epstein, you know, of course, he hasn't been tried in a court of law yet. So as lawyers, we shouldn't jump to conclusions, right? Right. You know, but... He's been it, tried in the public. He's definitely been realm, tried yeah. in the public. Yeah. And, you know, it's just a, a crazy thing, uh, you know, all these things that are being, you know, brought out and how deep some of these crazy things go. And I was uh, thinking about, you know, when we grew up in the 60s, you know, some of these um, images. Television shows and stuff. Yeah, you know, television shows, you know, really, really pigeonholed women a lot. And some in a good way and some in not such a good way. And I've been wrestling with this. Yeah, so you know? stereotypical. It was crazy. Yeah. And I like think it's just like something like Gilligan's Island, right? Oh, yeah. And Gilligan's Island. You had Ginger, Gillian. who was the sexy one. She had the little mole and, you yeah. know, the red hair. And she always talked in that soft kind of Marilyn Monroe voice. Yeah. And uh, and then you had Mary Ann, who was supposed to be the plain girl that no one the was really interested. The girl next door. Right. You yeah. know, she, she was actually very cute. And then you had um, Mrs. Howell, you know, the, oh, yeah. the lovey. Love right? her. Love her. And, uh, and, and she was the one who basically didn't have a thought in her head. You know, other than when was she going to get, you know, what was she going to do with her jewels or her, you know, right. be, have a chance to wear her makeup? Where's the proactive, strong woman in that television show? Well, I mean, I think that you had that in all those characters in one way or another. But, but it, not but, really overt. No, because, uh, you know, again, it was a sign of the times. Yeah, and, and exactly. you know, uh, women were were not thought, they were much more objectified. Yeah. Or I, I shouldn't say they were more objectified. It was it was you could get away with objectifying women more. Yeah, and and they were putting up with it uh, still. Um, and and uh, of course, kudos to women for now coming out. Uh, you know, coming uh, past that or trying to get past that. Uh, you know, more vigorously. And you know, so what do you think about that? Well, I, th- I think it's changed. You know, dramatically dynamically since then really i don't think so see and i think we me uh, too but, you don't think so no i think that there the effort is there i think the effort but even back then even way before the 60s the effort was there you had susan b anthony you know coming around and and trying to get votes for women i think i think it's been a, a long sh- hard struggle and um you know this latest thing with jeffrey epstein is just another uh, window into this whole problem in our society, you know? And so um, we're, we're lucky enough to have with us uh, today a gentleman by the name of Mark Willingham. Welcome to the show, Mark. Thank you. Good Thank morning. you for having me. Mark. And, and he's Mark, a, yeah, he's a ahead. longtime fashion industry expert and CEO of Agent, the fastest growing modeling platform in the world. As the CEO and co-founder of Agent, Mark is responsible for ensuring initiatives are aligned with the company vision, spearheading strategy, overseeing operations, and ongoing corporate performance. What does that all mean? You know. Yeah, tell us, Mark. <laughs> Was that just, pretty good? I work. I work a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you work with a, a lot of beautiful Models. women. I take it. Um, yes, and I think we redefine beauty at our agency. 
So I, I don't think Tell it's just about. about beauty. I think it's about empowerment. Okay. And That's it's a about good thing. diversity, inclusivity. I mean, we started this company knowing that there's a lot of problems in industries like modeling, acting, music, anywhere there's an imbalance in power between, and actually supply and demand. I mean, you have a lot of people pursuing dreams. Right. And they're at a disadvantage against those that can make the dreams happen. And in fact, that that is you know how a guy like Jeffrey, if he if he is guilty, Jeffrey Epstein, or Harvey Weinstein, or or yes, or anyone like that, uh, and I won't mention any other names that we could all think of. Sure. But um, you know they're they, they're exploiting somebody's uh, dreams, like your or or uh, you know uh, wanting to 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 be something in the entertainment industry or in, in something where they can be seen or, or that sort of thing. I wanted, oh, go ahead, Mark. I wanted I, to ask you something after that. I was going to say one thing that's really horrific about Jeffrey Epstein is that there's only a couple lines of defense, I think, for a model. And one is for them to know what's right and wrong themselves. Sure. Right. So, and there's a few reasons why they may not know that. I mean, when you're when you don't have a friend network next to you and you're going to a job or you're meeting with someone who's going to get you work and they ask you to do something that feels inappropriate, you may be questioning whether it is or not. I mean, in modeling, you can open Vogue and see a partially nude photograph or something that's implied and think that, well, that is modeling, right? Right. And, and is that what Gigi and, and, and Giselle, did they have to, is that just normal? Right. But when you have no one to ask at that moment, you start to think of, well, maybe I'm the one that's wrong. Yeah, you're on the spot. You're what? Correct. In your 20s. You're, you know, you haven't Teams. had a lot you know, life experiences as others. Correct. You know. And 10 years of maybe dreaming for that moment. Yeah. And then something happens. You don't want to blow that moment. Correct. That opportunity. And, th and then you're sitting there looking and you go, okay, well, there, you're your first line of defense. Do you know good enough? What should you do then? The only other line of defense that most models have is their agent. And when that gets, when someone goes in there and breaks that trust, and uh, you know, Harvey, I mean, uh, Jeffrey, one of the things that he did was associated with a modeling agency. And he oh, used he did. it. Yeah, yeah he, MC2. MC2. Yeah. And he used that agency to find women. That's why there's this trafficking element around the, the world. And he'd have people finding his type of woman or girls, in his case, you know, that's what's alleged, and bringing them to him. Allegedly minors, right? Uh, yeah. And so they were minors working for this agency? They, the agency went out and found them, scouted them, them recruited oh, them wow. for him. And so, so they may have culpability themselves. Absolutely. At some level, there's other people involved. Well, I think he started the agency, right? Well, he was one of the partners. I right. don't know what his initial involvement was, but... The, the scary thing is when you have that component that gets breached, then who else do you have looking out for you? And so that trust factor, that one line of defense that the models could depend on, hopefully, is now really maybe just a facade. So what do you tell, like this would apply to somebody, a woman, going to a job interview. It doesn't have to be modeling. So what do you tell your models when they're going to uh, a, an interview to get a job? What do you tell them? In, in regards to you know this crossing the line or this possible abuse? We want to educate every model on our platform. We have over 30,000 registered models right now. And we personally uh, talk to all the models. We work on education. We have an, an entire um, part of our platform that's based on education. So what do you do in those situations? Don't compromise your own moral compass. Like I can't define what everyone's individual morality is, but I can let them know what is expected, what is not expected, and what they should not do. And if they're, not un if they're uncomfortable at any time, leave. And we have their back. And no one well, else can claim that. Thing. Well, can they, call, they can call you too, though, right? Uh, absolutely. Say, Mark, this is getting a little out of hand. They, we have a thing called Agent Assist in our platform that is there 24-7. Someone can push that button. They can get a hold of someone at any time. We, unlike, and not to be talking too much about Agent right now, but... We've done things really different. I mean, not only are models vetted because they are models on our platform, but we've done something no one else has ever done, and we vet the clients. In order to book a model with our company, you have to apply. We do a sex offender check, criminal back, 
criminal background check, ID verification, verification of need on every single client who has contact with the model. No one else has ever done it. It seems like, well, why not? Right. But, but because it's driven by money. And, and you know, why are you going to turn down a $5,000 booking? We're Larry and Rob Mandel, the Brothers on Law, here on Go Country 105. Do you have a legal issue you need help with? We want to hear from you. Find us on Instagram and send us a message. Then tune in on Saturdays at 8 a.m. right here on Go Country 105. Is there any telltale signs that uh, a woman could... You know, that's going in an interview, uh, and in your context, a model interview. Like, hey, if he says X, Y, and Z, that's a telltale sign. Should be aware. Well, I look at it the same as look at the business, you know, professional um, way that we work in offices today. Maybe back in the 60s or 70s, there was a lot more commingling that was accepted about going to have drinks, or, you know, after the interview, if someone said, let's go have a drink, I'd like to talk to you more, that would be perceived very inappropriately right now. I think our morals have changed a little bit, yeah. haven't they? Like, and I was I was talking to my brother uh, off, you know, uh, just casually the other day, about this whole dichotomy between uh, a woman who is in like the, the modeling world or something like that, and they are in essence exploiting their own sexuality or their own beauty. Correct. In some ways, I mean, I don't think I think that's a very maybe traditional way of looking at modeling. And modeling has very many many different facets. There's lifestyle modeling, commercial modeling. I mean, like ageism is one component of that. You think about that. On our platform, or I think every agency, should not be looking at age. What they should be looking at is who is the right person for that role. And when someone says to us, well, how do we know which models are like 22 to 24? And I said, look at them and find the one that you think looks 22 to 24. We don't tell. We don't ask ages, and we won't provide ages okay. to any clients. But Let getting, see. but but the, this whole idea, though, that you know, we still have sexy ads out there. We still have sexy pictures, sexy outfits, uh, the runway. You know, the whole Victoria's the whole thing. Victoria's Secret, etc. Right. But but we also have what I think is almost like a, a, a pushback to the sexual revolution. Where we can't, you know, what there, there, there's, there's, we're having these uh, higher barriers or these more, more um, blurred lines. I think between what is right between a man or a woman, or you know, someone you have sexual interest in, and what, how far you are allowed to push the envelope. Would you well, agree? I do, but I think that the they're still sexy, and that's usually oriented towards the brand. So if a brand has a sexy connotation to it or that's just how they positioned it then they're going to market that way but right. everything does not need to be sexy everything that's needs to true. be defined by what is relevant to that brand and what's relevant to the target audience and i think what we've seen is a broadening of that perspective the younger generations um who are up and coming they expect that they expect a broader range of thinking i mean even in our at, at our company if you choose other for gender you have 57 different options to use to identify with. Wow. Because we just feel you are what you feel you are. That's, well, that is interesting. I, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Because, so, yeah, because, and, and when you say a broader range of thinking, it's almost like a higher level of thinking. You know, it's not so reptile as, well, as you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I mean, it's, I think it's so healthy that it's been brought to the surface and in this unfortunate way that now we have a, a much more of awareness of what there is in abuse in a lot of different industries, especially ones where uh, women are coming forward and they're looking for a job in acting, modeling, music. I think it makes a big difference now that, hey, you know what, Mr. Boss so-and-so, you're, you know, you're gonna be check and balance now. It's true, I think if people, if the awareness level is raised, I think it benefits everyone. Well, that's and, true. And the fact that, you know, it's horrific that these these they were having these conversations, but it's great that we're having these conversations. But where were the because parents? Because they are reality. Where were the parents, you know, for these... What do you mean? These young girls with uh, 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 Jeffrey Epstein. Because, you know, if they were over 18, I don't think he would be uh, being criminally prosecuted. Oh, you mean in Epstein's yeah, situation? in his situation. Well, they, they said, I'm staying over at my friend's house, you know? Right, and but so, come on. You know, come on. I mean, what do you think, Mark? 
Well, I think that there's a reason that we don't have models under 18 on sure. our, on our oh, platform. Oh, is that right? Okay. And it's because the parents need to be involved and they should not be relying on a company to play that parenting role or to be, the parents need to be involved at every level and the, the child should never be off because the parents at work, so they're gonna Uber them to some, you know, casting. Yeah. That just shouldn't happen. If that's what's happening, then the, the child should not be involved. Have you suffered or been injured by someone else's negligence? When you need a legal team that will stand up for what is right, won't give up the fight and obtain justice, call 818-886-6600. Mandel Trial Lawyers specializes in personal injury cases of all types. Whether it's a car accident, product or premises liability, dog bite, or a catastrophic injury, Mandel Trial Lawyers are there for you when the fight is worth it. Call now for your free consultation, 818-886-6600. Let the scales of justice tip in your favor. Do you think today you could have a 16-year-old Brooke Shields saying there's nothing between me and my Calvins? I think it would be very difficult, and I think to be more pushback that, it, that I don't think a brand would take that risk. Yeah. I mean, if you mentioned Victoria's Secret. Yeah. Right now, they're having, a, I mean, they're, they have huge challenges because the younger generation does not relate at all to that brand. And I think that they were caught way off guard. They were, most companies that are traditional are really blindsided by a new um, way of looking at the world, this forward progressive way of looking at things. And if you're under 30 years old, you tend to see the world differently than those people who are 40 and over. And in between, there's like kind of like a a neutral area where people just can't quite figure it out. But a lot of people say to me, well, your company's really disruptive. Those people would likely to be over 40. People 30 and younger would say, well, this is just how it should be. Mm. And I'm not saying they're naive. They just have a different view of the world and they would expect nothing less. I like that. Hey, we have with us today a a real woman. woman. A real woman. Barely. Who can can (laughs) weigh in on some of the things we've been talking yeah, about, right? And her and name is Cameron. Cameron, our producer, Cameron. Yeah. Cam. Hi. And, hi, Hello. Cam. Thanks for having me on. Of course. So I want to touch back to what I feel is really important is the job of the parent to... Re- and I'm a parent, and I have a daughter, and she's 12 years old, and I really, really push on her what... Stand up for yourself. Don't right. ever let... You know, somebody walk all over you, take advantage of you, say something, and say something in a respectful way, but have boundaries. And I think that the parents really need to enforce what's right and wrong, because that's where everything stems from. Whether how you're treated in your workplace, you know, how much you push yourself, self confidence, self worth. That's all how you get from growing up. If you if you ask me, I think it's really important to instill those moral values but a 12 13 14 15 year old kid may not have may be in the position to make the right uh, all the right choices yeah, well, either that's, that's and right. so no matter what mom or dad has said um you know they may at, at that age think this is the right thing to do is to sleep with this older guy you know uh, or something like that what scary. do you think Mark? it's true but i i think that the point is well taken that the, the parents need to instill that I think that's true of any part of raising a child. When you get to teenage years, you just hope your kids make smart decisions based on what you've instilled in them. You know, whether that means someone's starting to vape and handing you something and they say, no, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. So it goes at all levels. And I think that the parent, but the parent's involvement and making sure that that parent is involved. And I, I still see it. You go to New York, I have an office in New York and you go to New York and it's still that you know, kids are getting signed by big agencies and they're kids, they're yeah. 14, 16 years old and they're living in apartments and whether someone wants to believe it, you know, the parents aren't living with them a That's lot. too bad. They're that very, would never happen vulnerable. in my case. Yeah. I mean, you know, I just would never leave my child unsupervised with adults that, you know, for a work type of event. It just wouldn't happen. She would never live by herself. Although she's independent and very smart and observant and all the things I could tell about her, it still wouldn't happen. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and of course, brothersonlaw.com. I know my daughter, um, when she was uh, around that age, there was some type of modeling agency ad and we went to the the mall in Sherman Oaks. John Robert Powers. So, whatever Bad it was. John Robert Powers. Whatever it was. And so I went in there, but I was there 
right next to her, listening to all the banter and, and discussion about how they're going to get her a job and all this great stuff. And I left there going, we're not doing it. These guys are scamming us. I, I do not feel comfortable with their pitch. Mm. Right? Well, but I, uh, well, go ahead. I think that the sad part is, is that, quote unquote, the casting couch exists and it's not going to go away. But how can you arm yourself and, and inform yourself to, to handle that situation if it ever arises? And I think that that job is the parents. And um, I think that it's really great that your company is helping educate that as well, because I don't think that this is ever going to go away. Well, you were talking about before, Mark, you, you, know, you can't decide their morality for them. So where where the line crosses is going to be different for for I take it for different people, right? True. I think part of it is what is legal, what right. is coercion, uh, when does someone take advantage of someone because of that power imbalance, and then what's someone's individual choice from a standpoint of morality, and again defining whether someone decides to do a nude photo shoot as an adult is up to that adult. It's, right. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. It's just whether, what's what's really wrong with that is that it's often not transparent. So right. when you show up, like you need to know these things before you agree to the job. It's not when you show up and the lights are on. And they say, take off your clothes. And they say, do this. And, and it is not unheard of, unfortunately, for someone to say, I'm not uncomfortable with that. And then yeah. for that photographer to pick up the phone, call their agent, yell at the agent, hand the phone to the model, and try to use them against them to do what they're being asked to do. Yeah, it is refreshing to and what have do, an agency right. like Mark's. Well, what you do know? you do in that instance? You know, If you get that call, what do you do? Well, we've never had that call. Oh, and never? We, in wow. thousands of bookings, we have a perfect track record. And we, because of the, the background checks we do, the education, and quite frankly, I say it's akin a lot to having um, cameras in a bank. If you have two banks next to each other and one has a bunch of cameras, that bank is much less likely to have issues than the one without cameras. Right. So people that's know true. that we're aware, we watch everything that's going on, we're about total transparency. And so, and quite frankly, the background checks we do, um, some of the things that come back, they scare me, but yeah. we know what we've stopped. And, and so, what, oh, no. what, what would be an example? What, Wait, what would be an I think example? we're running out of time though. Are right? we? Yeah. No, I want to hear one example. All Go right, ahead. Give us one. I mean, we've had people that have felonies for um, child sex, abuse, child death, everything, Ooh. child child abuse, uh, sexual related um, felonies. We've had recently. We just had one that was a home invasion robbery. With wow. and these are things that we've just seen, and we're like, yeah, right. But these are the people that are out there in the world. There's just predators there, out there. there. There needs to be more lines of defense, and if well, we can lift the bar for everyone and help raise awareness, then we're doing what we need to do. So you're the model of model agency. Yeah. We are, hopefully, yes. We yeah, are setting good, the bar right? much higher. Well, right. Mark, I'd or, like to say that agent is not just, uh, sounds like a groundbreaking agency, but you're an advocate for models' rights, whether that be male, female, whatever it is, is that you're really on their side. We are. We are about reimagining the industry from the ground up, changing it, and making it a worldwide um, transition to something that's much better. That mentality and, is great. And maybe even changing the way people see modeling and what is, you know, considered a model. We're Larry and Rob Mandel, the brothers-in-law, here on Go Country 105. Do you have a legal issue you need help with? We want to hear from you. Find us on Instagram and send us a message. Then tune in on Saturdays at 8 a.m. right here on Go Country 105. So... Anybody can apply, right, to the agency? How can they do that? Anyone can apply. It's free. So anyone can just go to, actually, our, our URL is joinagent.com. You can go there. You can apply. Um, there is a vetting process. It goes for our committee. Uh, we have one simple criteria, and that's do we believe you'd get booked for a professional modeling job. Unlike like hundreds of criteria another agency might have, it's very simple with us. And so we have models with tattoos on their faces, um, it, it doesn't matter to us. There's just that something, and when we see it, we know it. But the clients go through an even heavy, heavier vetting process. And, um, yeah, we're out there trying to raise the bar. We're doing, you know, as the fastest-growing company in, in uh, modeling right now, we feel we're on our way, but we have a long way to go, so we need everyone's support. 
There you go. That's Join Agent, J O I N Agent, A G N T dot com. You got it. Join Agent. Learn how to spell, right? Okay, so. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, Why? Are, are, there, are there any. Are there any <laughs> tips, Mark? Well, there's no dot that agent you would give an to, to these uh, these people who want to be models. Sure, and, sure. I, I feel that everyone should be pursuing their dreams. And one of the things that we've tried to do, because we're a platform-based um, company with technology, that we actually are allowed to bring modeling to people who may not be able to come to New York and LA. So you could be in Dallas, and you don't need to pack your bags oh, and nice. move to a city and try to get by. You can join from Dallas and when you get work you can get on the plane to go do the work instead of having to take those types of risks yeah. so I believe that everyone should chase their dreams but keep their head level don't don't make choices that will make you wish you hadn't done those um, the, the next day or yeah. a week later or two weeks later and be informed read up know what you're doing um, and know that this isn't an industry that traditionally um, has been great, but it also has a bit of a dark side. So you have to be aware of all of it. But go out and chase your dreams and know that we're here to support you. There you go. Perfect. Hey, it's right, time Mark. for tip of the day. No, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to skip the tip of the day because we've been having so much Mark fun. Mark just gave to Mark. us a lot of tips. Yeah, yeah he, he did. sure did. He did. So yeah. we're going to we're going to get here from our Mandel message box. Let's check the Mandel message box. Hi, Rob. Hi, Larry. My roommate and I are being evicted because she can't pay her portion of the rent. We're both on the lease and I have been paying my half. Now I have to move. Do I have any legal recourse against her? My roommate and I are being evicted because she can't pay her portion of the rent. We are both on the lease and I've been paying my half. Now I have to move. Do I have any legal recourse against her? Yes. Well, I would say, of course, um, she's a co-tenant. And if she agreed to pay half the rent, then you'll seek, a, you know, compensation from her. What else? What well, do you think? What, 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 here's what I think. I think that her and her uh, friend who's not paying have a contract. They have a contract together. And her friend is in breach of that contract. And um, but the legal recourse, unfortunately, is um, limited by pragmatics, meaning that she can take her friend to small claims court and do all that and get the judgment and all that. Collection. But, but yeah, collect. How is she going to collect? We'll have to see. Yeah, yeah. And, she, and on the so, on, on the so other the moral hand, of the story is get good roommates. Yeah, get, get good that's, roommates. That is the moral of the story. You want good. You want good agents. And you want good models and you want good roommates. And if your friend is in pain, you're going to be stuck paying the entire lease. That's the problem. Have you suffered or been injured by someone else's negligence? When you need a legal team that will stand up for what is right, won't give up the fight and obtain justice, call 818-886-6600. Mandel Trial Lawyers specializes in personal injury cases of all types. Whether it's a car accident, product or premises liability, dog bite, or a catastrophic injury, Mandel Trial Lawyers are there for you when the fight is worth it. Call now for your free consultation, 818-886-6600. Let the scales of justice tip in your favor. All right, so um, we really want to thank Mark uh, Willingham for being here from Asian and giving us some insights on you know the, the modeling world and how women in general can protect themselves. So thank you very much, Mark. Thank you for having me. And uh, just know it's, been it's our pleasure. also men. So yes, yeah, indeed. they run the same types right. of problems. Actually. That's right. Do they really? Oh, they well, do. that's for another that's show. Another that's show. like yeah. a kind of a Kevin Spacey. We don't think type about that a lot, but it's well, there. <laughs> Kevin Spacey type yeah. of uh, thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. You had to get that in. Didn't Sorry. You? But, okay. Uh, Sorry, Kevin. All right. <laughs> so. Anyway, if you've missed any part of the show or you want to hear any previous shows, head on over to brothersonlaw.com and be sure to tune in next Saturday morning at 8 a.m. for another exciting show right here on Go Country 105. And remember, let the scales of justice tip, tip in, in your, your favor. favor. Tip in your favor. The opinions expressed in the Brothers on Law Show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal professional legal advice.